don't ask them to explain their bad behavior. It's actually kind of, I wouldn't say mean. It's not a, not a leader. A leader wouldn't do that. Oh, three-year-old, uh, like at 6.30, will get rambunctious and doesn't listen as well as he's whiny. Yeah, okay, that, that can be the witching hour. Usually the witching hour is around, I found, any time between about four and six. Uh, but then when it gets past that, yeah, they're just overtired. Try and have uh, just read books and do stuff that isn't wild, right? So maybe do some Play-Doh or something sitting at the kitchen table. So just stuff that's a little bit, you know, yeah, a little bit less wild. But yeah. Uh, how do you handle consequences on vacation where you don't do chores? Have you got a brush and you've got hair on your head? I'd get them to brush my hair. I love having my hair brushed. And my kids both hated doing it. So that's, I would have said, oh, go get the brush. <laughs> you left your sandy swim trunks on the on the floor of the hotel room. Go get a brush. Oh, shoot. Okay, here you go. Yeah, stuff like that. Get creative. Have fun with it. When asked my son, why did you do that? He says, because I do that. Why? LOL. Why do you ask him why you did that? You're berating him. Don't do that. Say, uh, you did that. That was naughty. Here's a consequence. Don't analyze what they did wrong. Don't. If you're going to hire me. I, I don't even do that. I already understand. Uh, yeah, they're just going to do dumb things sometimes. Don't ask them to justify their bad behavior. That's berating them. It's like saying, let's say you said something stupid or snotty and someone said to you, why would you say that? What's wrong with you? Why would you do that? You're berating them. You, you, how would you feel? You don't ask them to justify their bad behavior. It's rubbing it in. It's kind of, I, I wouldn't do it. Say, okay, that was bad. Here's your consequence. Check out the behavior board. It teaches you how to do that. But yeah, you just take action. You just say, here's your consequence. You broke the rule. Here's your consequence. It's happening. Don't ask them to explain their bad behavior. It's actually kind of, I wouldn't say mean. It's not a, not a leader. A leader wouldn't do that. It would it'd be like, um, it would be like if you were a boss and your employee made a mistake. Why did you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you make that mistake? You see, you're belittling them. Yeah, and just say, oh, you messed up. Okay, maybe I didn't teach you well enough. Okay, let's go through it again. Do you get it now? Okay, if you need my help, let me know. That's what that's what I do. That's how I would talk. I wouldn't ask them to explain why they why they couldn't do it right. See? See where I'm going with that? Um, you got to give respect to get it. That's why you've got disrespect. You were very disrespectful by, for asking him to explain his bad behavior. That was disrespectful. So he just threw it right back in your face. When you respect them, they tend to respect you. I mean, here's the thing, though. If you're going to buy a book or, or follow someone's parenting advice, they have to have these two criteria, okay? They have to have finished the job with their own kids. If they haven't lived with teenagers right through to adulthood, what do they know? Like, how can you possibly teach parenting if you haven't even done that? Uh, I, I know that there's probably people out there with just little children teaching parenting. It's like teaching financial advice with $10 in the bank. It makes absolutely no sense. If they haven't lived with teenagers, how do they know? How to invest in the teen years. How do they know what's coming? They don't, okay? Make sure they've finished the job with their own kids. The second one is, like, my kids are pretty easy. I got respect when they were little, so I sailed right through the teen years. They have to have had experience with hundreds of other kids. I've worked with kids like you wouldn't believe, troubled teenagers, all sorts of challenges. I never worked with easy kids. I was only handed, you know, kids with behavior issues. So that's where I honed all this. So there's a two criteria. They have to finish the job with their own kids and they have to have worked with hundreds of other kids with all sorts of challenges. Otherwise, don't, don't look at them. And what do they know? They can't, it's experience-based. A huge portion of my clients are teachers, principals, and child psychologists. They identify parenting as personal. What they do is institutional or business. They have clients and students. I teach, I I teach parenting. It's personal. It's completely different. I can't do what they do. I couldn't teach your child psychology. I couldn't do any of that, but I know parenting. I know how to connect and mother and parent ch children. That's my thing. So yeah, it's a specialty. I'm sure there's lots of other old women out there or old men out there like me who've done the same thing. So check that out. It has to be, it's heavily experience-based. A lot of changing teachers in my daughter's pre-K class, and she's having a hard time with a lot of frequent changes. What can I do to support her during this time? Nothing much. Transition is difficult for children. They, they very uh, much are into structure, habit, routine. Okay, it's just difficult. Uh, you won't find too many kids who do very well through that. But that's okay. It builds resilience, builds strength. It's a muscle that they're building. So look at it that way. There's not much you can do about that.
Sorry about that. But the more structure and routine you have at home, then it makes them feel safe. It makes them, it kind of helps. It kind of counterbalances a little bit. So yeah, not much you can do. You can't change that at school anyway, right? So yeah, it's she's pre-K. There's nothing you can do. My eight-year-old and six-year-old are bickering a lot, especially eight-year-old. Younger comes and complains. The atmosphere in the house is not great. But when they are out and about, they're nice to each other. How can I improve the situation? Sometimes I want to be out and about with them and not spend time indoors. Um, so they're great when they're out. Well, that's because they've got other stuff to do. They're probably more bored, bored at home. But also when you're at home, uh, because they're distracted when they're out, right? When they're at home, so I've got sirens coming along here. You probably can't hear it, but I, it's bothering me. Just because I think it's going to bother this. Just a sec here. Because the person who works for me takes snippets of this live, and I don't want the siren in that. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> well, they're girls, too. Girls are a little bit different when they fight. Anyway, so your daughters are eight and six years old, and they're bickering a lot. What you do is you don't spend one-on-one -on -one time with each child. I say that there's lots of different ways of dealing with this, but this is the one that seems to be the most general, and people say it helps. Um, anyway, you never spend one-on-one -on -one time with children who are bickering. You only you do stuff with them, so like together, and you always play to the weakest link. You play to the six-year-old's abilities, and you do silly stuff, nothing competitive. You don't play Monopoly. You go around the board once, and we all know who's going to win the rest of the game. Like, it's just no fun, right, for everybody else. One person's, you know, park place, boardwalk, <laughs> the rest of us are like... Oh, I've got Connecticut or, you know, is Connecticut a good, no, Baltic or something. Anyway, so don't play anything competitive. Just do silly fun games. Look up fun activities for six and eight year olds and just do silly stuff at home. Okay. And it helps them bond at home. It'll give them a better relationship at home. Also, they, children tend to bond over laughing at you. You join in with them and do the silly stuff and they're always going to be better at it than you. You know, like we used to do stuff like hopping around the house. How many laps can you do on hopping on one foot? Well, an older woman compared to little kids, who's going to win? So it was always laughing at mom, right? So yeah, never do one-on-one -on -one time. It builds resentment. Even though it's fair and reasonable, I spent 30 minutes with her and 30 minutes with you. What is that doing for their relationship? Nothing, 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 but building resentment. Okay, uh, my fresh four-year-old girl has... My fresh four-year-old girl has started overreacting to almost everything in a dramatic fashion, screaming and truly emotional. Okay, this is from, I don't know your name on there. Anyway, um, it's got to work. What I mean is at four years old, they only do what works. There's got to be a payoff. It must upset you. It must make her feel powerful because you get upset. That's it. it they only do what works. Okay, so it must work. There's got to be a payoff for that. Figure it out. What's the payoff? Check out my boot camp course that might help you out, or you can hire me for coaching if you want. It's all in the link above. Um, but the boot camp course is probably all you need. Or you can just check out the behavior board. That's completely free. It goes behavior board free, boot camp course, five weeks for your leadership skills. You that's all about you. Or coaching is the, the top level of what I've got to offer. Three-year-old being aggressive to me and one-year-old brother when something doesn't go her way. Also, she tells me not to blah blah blah. Talk to her when I try to give her a consequence. Um, three -year -old. Sorry. <laughs> Kids are funny. Check out the behavior board. Just check it out. Look at the behavior board. It's completely free. It's up in the link above. Or you can check out my boot camp course. <laughs> I just say, don't talk to me. <laughs> it's a snotty little face. I can just say, don't speak to me. I'm busy. Oh, kids are kids are a riot. Uh, yeah, check out the behavior board. It'll teach you how to do that. It's very little words. It's more about just the behavior board's up there and there's a consequence and just make it happen. Do parents tend to over explain you know when you keep going well you know we shouldn't have done that and you you know you made me feel bad and you hurt your little brother this is what they hear me they're not listening at all take action have a consequence you know i probably wouldn't pay my taxes or pay for my groceries if, if i didn't have to do you know what i mean like there's a consequence if you don't as adults we all have consequences if we don't pay our mortgage we lose our house if we don't pay taxes we go to jail if we speed chances are we'll get caught one day you know what I mean? There's a, we all run by consequences. I think we forget that. Children need very, very clear understanding of consequences. They need to understand everything's their choice. I always told that to my kids. If your good life is good, if your bad life ain't so good, I'll make sure of that because I'm your mom and that's my job. So I taught them that every the way their life goes is up to them. It's your choice. Sure, you can do your chores. If you don't, there'll be a consequence. That's your choice. Like I had nothing to do with it. It's up to them.